Uh, I think it was Andrew who spoke about what the NIE, I think that's what it's called, and how they are going about doing it. Um, so you might have one government agency that's really actually pushing for AD, providing the systems. What if it's not really talking to the other agencies? So it may be, you know, it may be pushing for accessibility in one arena, but maybe healthcare systems are not accessible, and maybe education systems are not accessible, and different agencies are not talking to each other. In some cases, like in Cambodia, you might have to deal with the agency that works on sports. So you just have to think about a bunch of different agencies that need to come together. You need to have a supportive political and legislative climate. Again, we've spoken about these issues. What if um, the government thinks it's better to give AT and disability pensions to veterans of war rather than uh, people who met with an accident? Um, do you have an actual network of third party? So, you know, there are many things you require these to establish those systems. And finally, let's say the technology is available. It's there, I can access it. Just that doesn't really mean that um, it's going to ensure quality outcomes. It's going to be effectively used, or I'm going to find it effective for my needs, or it's going to be sustainable. And we've spoken about some of those issues, you know, maintenance, repair, so I won't get into that. So really, um, we are talking about, about a variety of individual and environmental factors that really impact whether you can use the AT you want and whether that AT is going to help you engage in the kinds of participation that you want to engage in. So then we come to this whole notion of appropriate technology. And um, I think all of us pretty much know what that would mean, what that refers to, and you'll hear these commonly thrown terms, you know, it has to be apt for the user and the environment, it's to be sustainable and affordable. But in some cases, it's also applied for technology that's, you know, used in these poor countries and these poor regions. So it's low cost, it's low solution. And low cost is great as long as it doesn't mean low quality, you know, and as long as it doesn't mean poor design. So there is also this assumption that if a well-designed product naturally means something that's complex, something that's you know very sophisticated engineering, sophisticated manufacturing, and absolutely unfeasible for a low-resource environment. And that's where I put uh, something, I can provide everybody with these articles, but Murray in 2005 published an article where he said, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, a technology's design and the quality of the design has to be measured by is it durable for the environment in which it is going to be produced. It could be like the simplest design, it could be the lowest cost. Is it going to be durable? Is it truly, you know, um, is it affordable? If you answer all of those questions, then that is what really appropriate AD is. Appropriateness of assistive technology also means um, a match of the sorry, the person, the technology, and the environment. And uh, what I mean by that is you have to think about an individual's own abilities and the different combination of abilities that they bring to the picture. The expectations are, and reactions to technology. And Bridget mentioned this morning that people's expectations, people's beliefs, people's, um, I don't know how you put it, but your expectations from technology can change as your awareness changes. So we really need to think about those expectations. For example, um, there was one study I read where you have these hearing, earlier you used to have these hearing aids which were called these body hearing aids. So you had, um, you had a piece you know, over the ear, but then your actual receiver was like this little case which had to be strapped around your body and you had a cord going from the transmitter, sorry, going from that receiver to uh, the hearing aid over your earpiece. People, there were people who didn't like to have that. You went around and it was right there, it was visible, there was this cord, they didn't want it. So there were some people who were not using that hearing aid, even though it really helped them in their participation. So things like these, so user desires do make you know, an impact on whether they're gonna use it or throw it away. Culture, attitudes, background, I think we've spoken a lot about that. We have spoken about um, you know, uh, the whole 
idea of women versus men and who gets access to AD when resources are limited. Um, there is also this notion of, um, for example, in many developing, sorry, in developing countries where you have um, the system of the joint family, an individual doesn't make any decision. Like they don't even sometimes make the decision about what technology I'm going to use. It's a family decision. So things like that, it does impact. Um, of course, nature of government supports. Do you have financial assistance from the governments? Do you have um, insurance coverage? Um, also service supply chains, service delivery infrastructure. And I think the critical thing to know is if you don't have a good match, people are going to reject that technology or abandon that technology. Okay, and this is what I started with. That none of this information is new to any of you, but I think our idea was, um, so how do we take all these different factors? How can we put it into, or can we put it into one framework you know, which can assess the quality, the efficacy, which is people's confidence that this works or this technology works or that they will use this technology, and the potential for generating sustainable and successful AD outcomes. So if we call that as the quality of assistive technology, then when somebody tomorrow says, I want to design a solution for a particular problem in a particular region, can they use this framework? Can they think about, okay, this may really work. These components work, this doesn't work. And this is not something new. I think the idea was, can it be used across all types of AD? One framework that can be used across all types of AD, uh, across all different models of delivery. Becky spoke about you know, do-it-yourself solutions and your social entrepreneurship solutions. You also have charity-based models, community-based rehabilitation systems. All the different methods of giving people access to AD can we have one common framework which can assess these. And can it then you know, tell you, yeah, this particular approach is appropriate for this AD, for this region, for this problem. Can we compare different models to each other? Can I discard one for the other? Or can I say, you know, this part of this approach works, the rest don't. Can I use this part of this approach, that part of that approach, put together a program based on all of these? Now, we are not the first people to do it, obviously. Uh, there have been past attempts. There are um, quite a few published studies where people have tried to draw out Okay, how do you uh, evaluate a model of AD service delivery in resource limited environments in developing countries? But a lot of those, um, either they concentrate on one type of technology and then they only really study that type of technology and whether it works with that type of technology, for example, wheelchairs. Um, a lot of them look at, okay, um, how is the technology, can the user use it, is the user continuing to use it after a few years, is it sustainable, so on, but they're not really, really looking, oh my god, I have to stop now. <laughs> um, okay, I'm really going to try to rush if you can give me five more minutes. <laughs> so they don't, they're not really incorporating the, you know, the more government political context, which we've spoken about in our presentations today, the cultural context. So, what do we do? So this is what we put together. Um, this is, like I said, it's a draft. It's a starting framework. Can we use this? Where do we take it from here? And the way we broke it out is, okay, first let's think about, you know, what's the input and how can we make it sustainable? So we had the engineering design quality control. I'm gonna talk about each of these very quickly. Um, the economic or business case for having that model there. Consumer perspectives, where we're talking about matching the person the technology, knowledge awareness, and service delivery. Uh, the context, which would be the government, political, and cultural. And finally, the impact and outcomes. What do you mean by engineering or quality control? Again, this is just really the physical quality of the device. Um, is it durable? What, what goes into its fabrication? What are the materials? Are those materials available? Um, is, it, you know, is, it, is it easy to repair, maintain? All of that. Uh, the economic and business case. Now this is a slightly tricky one because we are not 